I've spent the last few months researching software engineering, tech leaders, and experts about what's coming in 2025. And honestly, after speaking to some of these individuals, I couldn't sleep at night. Not because it's scary or, you know, horrifying, but because it's actually so fascinating. Today, we are going to talk about the trends coming up for software engineering in 2025. What this industry will look like by the end of the year. And this is such a hot topic because we have heard from so many different tech leaders from Mark Zuckerberg to Salesforce CEO to so many, well, really so many different CEOs saying they maybe not be hiring as much for software engineers this year. They're going to be focusing on using AI systems, what does this exactly mean for what's to come with software engineering? That is what we are covering today. Before I dive into this though, I want to tell you about a moment I had while visiting a major tech company recently. I was watching their development team work, speaking to some of them, and something really interesting caught my eye. The developer wasn't just writing code, she was having a conversation with her computer like an actual back and forth conversation about how to solve a problem. And I'm sure you've done this before, I know I've done this before, and it really hit me. We're not just changing the tools we use to build software, we're changing what software fundamentally is. So on that note, let's break down four big ideas that are completely transforming software engineering. And stick around to the end because the fourth one is going to blow your mind. Well, it blew mine anyways. Big idea number one, software that learns like a friend. Okay, you know how you have a friend for a long time, they start to pick up on your habits. They know you hate mornings, so they never call before 10 a.m. They know you love Thai food, so they always suggest that new Thai place first. Well, that's what's happening with software in 2025. And it actually has a name. It's called Software 2.0. And it's way more than just another tech buzzword. According to the head of engineering at Newtonix, we're entering a 20 year transformation where software won't just do what we tell it to do, it will learn from how we use it. So let's talk about what this means in real life. Your music app doesn't just recommend songs based on what you've listened to. It learns when you like different types of music. Workout music in the morning, chill breathes in the afternoon, maybe party playlist on Friday nights, or if you're like me, no music on Friday nights because I need to relax. But your productivity apps work in patterns as well. They might notice you are more creative in the morning and automatically minimize distractions during those hours. Your smart home actually becomes smart, adjusting your habits without you having to program everything. And here's a really interesting perspective from the CEO of Microsoft. AI is not just a layer on top of existing software, it's fundamentally changing how we think about building and interacting with applications. The future is software that grows and evolves with its users. But here's where it gets really interesting. All of this learning happens without developers having to explicitly program it. The software evolves on its own based on how you use it. Okay, big idea number two, the AI partner revolution. So remember that developer I mentioned earlier who was talking to her computer? That's part of something huge happening in software development, but it's not what you might think. See, there's been panic about AI replacing developers. Everywhere you look, you hear that. But based on extensive research and industry reports, I can tell you that's not exactly what's happening. Instead, we're seeing this really interesting partnership emerge. So let's break down what that actually looks like. Imagine you're building a house. AI is like having not just one assistant, but an entire team of specialized experts. You have one assistant showing you different materials, another catching problems before they happen, and maybe another suggesting better ways to use the space. That's really what's happening with AI agents in software development. Instead of just one AI tool, developers now have entire teams of specialized AI agents, each with their own expertise. For example, a planning agent that can break down complex features into manageable tasks. A coding agent that suggests implementations and spots potential bugs, which is something I needed when I was doing software development nine to five and using Stack Overflow before AI was something we used every day. And there are so many other ways, such as a testing agent that automatically generates test cases, a documentation agent that keeps up to date with technical docs, or a security agent that continuously checks for vulnerabilities. But here's what makes this really fascinating. These agents don't just work independently. They collaborate with each other and the developer. So imagine you're writing a new feature. The planning agent creates a roadmap, the coding agent helps implement it, and the testing agent verifies it works. 
The documentation agent maybe updates the technical specs, all while you orchestrate and make the key decisions. Here's something I found really interesting from NVIDIA's CEO. AI agents are creating a new software development workflow where developers become conductors of an AI orchestra rather than having to play every instrument themselves. I think this sums it up really well. Here's an insight as well from Google's CEO that puts things into further perspective. The future of software development is a symphony between human creativity and AI capabilities. We're not replacing developers, we're supercharging their abilities to solve complex problems. But here's the interesting twist. While these AI agents are incredibly powerful, we're also entering what experts call AI fall. No, this is not like autumn or it's a different season, it's a period where companies are realizing that AI isn't magic. They're moving from AI all the things to, okay, what tasks can be handled by AI agents and what needs to have the human touch? The key is finding the right balance. Some companies rush to automate everything with AI agents and learn the hard way that you can't remove humans from the equation, which is really good for us as humans. The most successful teams are using AI agents to handle the routine tasks while keeping humans in charge of the creative and strategic decisions. As the CEO of AWS notes, the future isn't about AI agents replacing developers, it's about finding the perfect harmony between human insight and AI capabilities. The most successful companies will be those that master this balance. Also as a side note, all these CEOs quotes, they all have this like orchestra musical undertone, which is interesting. Now, according to recent reports, companies invested nearly 27 billion in AI deals this year, the past year. But now they're asking the hard questions. What's the actual return on this investment? Where is AI truly helpful versus just hype? Which brings us to number three, the great digital renovation. Okay, so this part I find really fascinating. Did you know most of the software that is running our world is older than most people watching this video? I'm sure for you developers, you knew this. Some banks are still running code from when you know, the 70s or 80s. And in 2025, we're seeing the biggest software renovation project in history. Now, it's not just about replacing old code with new code, it's renovating a historic building. You wanna keep the beautiful classical elements while adding modern conveniences. Make it more energy efficient, but not lose what made it special in the first place or completely break it. And developers working on these modernization products have stories that would make your head honestly spin. Like how one tiny piece of code from 1983 was keeping together an entire airline's booking system. Or how a bank's core system was still using commands designed for punch cards. Now, the CEO of OpenAI has highlighted the importance of modern modernizing legacy systems. The challenge isn't just about adding AI to old systems, it's about fundamentally reimagining our infrastructure for an AI-first world while preserving the reliability that made these systems trustworthy in the first place. And it's not just them. According to McKinsey report, over 70% of enterprises are planning to invest in digital modernization initiatives this year. But here's what makes this renovation, if you will, really different. We're using AI and modern tools to do it safely. And this really helps us know what is going on before we completely remove parts of the code. Okay, the last big idea is the speed of light revolution. So you remember when I said the fourth idea would be blow your mind for better terms or lack of better terms? Well, here is what it really is. We're literally moving data at the speed of light. Companies are hiring special engineers called data streaming engineers, whose entire job is to handle what moves in real time or data that moves in real time. And when I say real time, I mean real time. Stock, stock trades happening in micro, microseconds, can't speak. <laughs> Weather data updating every second or traffic patterns adjusting instantly. Now, let me show you something really cool. See this real-time data visualization? Each dot you see here represents data moving through a system. In the old world, data moved in batches, like waiting to do your laundry all at once. Now, it flows consistently, like having a washing machine that cleans each sock the moment it gets dirty, which would be really nice. But all this speed comes with challenges. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. You need to find specialized tools and techniques just to handle it all. And this brings us some, to something that's really crucial, which is security. Security isn't just about building walls anymore. It's about having smart systems that can spot and stop threats instantly. A recent IDC study found that real-time data processing could boost operational efficiency by as much as 40% across various industries from finance to healthcare. 
When you put all of these pieces together, software that learns, AI partnerships, massive modernization, and light speed data, you start to see something really amazing emerging. We're not just changing how we build software, we're changing what software can really be. So, you know, what really keeps me up at night, if you will, is thinking about all this. It's not the technology itself. It's imagining what we can do with all of this technology. The problems we'll be able to solve, the experiences we'll create, the ways we'll connect. So I hope when you leave this video, you feel positive about the future of software engineering. The role itself will change. We went through so many different examples of this, but you're not just a tool and you're not using just a tool. You're interacting with something that's evolving, learning and getting better as you do. Let me know in the comments what's one way you hope your software developer career or if you're a software user will help you adapt better in the future. If you found this topic interesting, you might wanna check out one of my other recent videos on top tech trends for 2025. Now, this is a really great way if you want to stay up to date on what's to come in 2025, software development, but also otherwise. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.